Hello, plant people. My hair has gone crazy. Crazy hair. Anyone who knows a redhead knows that redhead's hair is like super straw. It's like strawy, strawy hair. Anyways, it means that wherever you put it, it stays. It just stays there. And it always looks like a lion's mane. Not to mention my hair is like excessively long, so that doesn't really help. Anyways, hi, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants and soil. Mm -hmm. Logic. If you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, join our awesome crew. And let me know in the comments where you hail from because yes, it matters for indoor plants and out. Helps me curate my videos just a little bit better suited towards you guys. As you guys know, I have started a series on soil amendments. If you want a little bit of a precursor to that, I suggest you check out that first episode, then maybe check out the second episode where we talk about nematodes as a way to control fungus gnats, thrips, mealybugs, you name it, anything that's born in the soil, these guys take care of. It is awesome. You can use it indoors, outdoors, wherever you desire. Anyways, I will digress. And in today's video, we're talking about LECA. Now, before y'all get in a twist about that not being a soil amendment, just zip your lips and listen because I can actually promise you that this is actually a amendment and I have used it and I have pushed people to use it as a soil amendment, not only in the sense of um, hydroponically, but actually mixing it into your potting soil. So in today's video, we're going to be going through all the science involved with LECA and LECA is like a soil scientist's dream. Like if we're talking something that's interesting to me, this product is probably a dream come true to my brain. And like, it's like a literal brain treat. Let's just jump into this beautiful product that I swear by and I love. If you guys want a very inexpensive the exact brand I use, the exact type I use, it's not fancy, it's not colored or dyed. There's a lot of colored dyed ones coming out right now. This is just very basic, very cheap stuff. Then check out the Amazon affiliate link down below to grab this stuff. Like I said, you do not have to be doing semi-hydroponic versus um, or anything. You can actually just mix it into your soil. And I'm gonna go over how and why you would do this. Um, if you're a heavy waterer or you're someone that likes big pots, but not filling them all the way to the top with soil, then that, that portion of the video is definitely for you. I'll also be talking about how to transition plants from soil to LECA and what you're going to experience and explaining exactly why LECA is one of the best products to start cuttings out in. So let's just jump into the, the deliciousness that is this, this wonderful product. So what exactly is LECA? Well, LECA is actually an acronym. It's not the name of this product. LECA stands for Light Weight Expanded Clay Aggregates. Yep, it's a mouthful. That's why, that's why we changed it to LECA. So essentially what it is, is it's clay particles that have been put under very, very, very high heat and expanded and through the expansion there was insertion of air bubbles and with the insertion of air bubbles we end up with this very beautiful honeycomb appearance on the inside and this gorgeous round burnt ball look on the outside and let's just face it it's not hard on the eyes to look at and it's very mess free so that's a huge bonus especially if you have putty tats in the house that uh, like to go to the bathroom in your plants. It's uh, some great stuff in that sense. However, <laughs> if you have cats that really like to play with round ball things, then uh, yeah, I'm just going to put it out there. You definitely don't want to leave like a bags laying around. You can ask anyone who's come to my house, there's uh, quite a few ouchy moments because there's just LECA balls that are also cat toys just kind of flying around all over. So don't leave your LECA bag or your, your bucket, whatever you have it in. Don't leave that laying around if you have cats. They are like one of their favorite toys, just an FYI. The fact that it's clay makes it very unique and very specific, like it's able to do some very specific jobs and roles that you would not normally find with most uh, 
soil amendments. So you would not find this with perlite, you would not find this with vermiculite, you would not find a lot of the solutions that you find with LECA in these other cases. If you're a gardener or you have an outdoor garden and you hear clay, you probably, your ears probably start bleeding because clay is notorious for causing something called a hard pen. Clay is notorious for being waterlogged and it's just notorious for poor growing conditions. However, that honeycomb appearance in LECA is what makes it unique and it removes that waterloggedness <laughs> away or out of the picture. Now, one of the beauties of clay and one of the reasons why gardeners, farmers, anyone actually needs clay in some form in their garden is due to something called the cation exchange capacity, which we've talked about before. And what that means is essentially that clay and organic material, but in this case, clay has a negative charge to it. When clay has a negative charge, it actually is a magnet essentially for cations. So positive, positively charged ions, meaning most nutrients. Because high cation exchange capacity being tested in a soil by a soil scientist typically means waterlogged but high nutrients. In this case with LECA, it removes that waterlog factor and it solely relies on the fact that we have a high amount of nutrients. The holding water holding capacity is through capillary action because the porosity in that honeycomb structure is so tiny, it works on capillary action. So the meniscus um, that you see when you fill up a test tube, say if you're doing water propagation with a test tube, if the tube is small enough, you will see a slight rise on the side. I'll try to insert some videos of this, but um, a slight rise on the side, that is actual capillary action. So what's happening with the LECA when we have it semi-hydroponically or just in our soil in general, we are relying and we're utilizing that um, capillary action to ensure that there's water that the root hairs can grab onto, but not enough that we don't have air as well. So very, very unique. Um, so you're probably wondering, well, what's the downfall of LECA? What, what reason would you have to not use LECA either in your soil or semi-hydroponically or hydroponically? Why would you not use LECA? And there's a few, there's a few pitfalls to this product. With its ability to attract nutrients, and when I say its ability to attract nutrients, I, I don't want this to be understated. I'm talking about calcium, magnesium, zinc, iron, manganese, hydrogen. <laughs> like, literally, there's a lot of them that are positively charged, but there's also another one that's positively charged, and it uh, starts with an N and it ends with an A. No, it doesn't. It starts with an S and it ends with an M, and my chemistry brain just literally gave you Anyways, sodium. And we've talked about sodium. We talked about sodium when we're talking about using Epsom salt as a hack. We've talked about sodium when we've talked about over fertilization and what happens when we over fertilize. So you guys already know my thoughts on sodium. While a plant does need it in some capacity, it does not like it in high amounts. And because it's positively charged and it's actually like I said in previous videos, a very big molecule that occupies a huge number of sites within the clay in the cation exchange capacity, it can become toxic. And that is one of the pitfalls of LECA. So if you're noticing a lot of white kind of lines or formations on your LECA balls, you probably have too much sodium in there and you are actually going to need to rinse these guys out. It is incredibly important that you do not just put LECA in a container without a hole on the bottom. You always need to put LECA in a semi-hydroponic system inside of a cup with holes in it that's inside of a cover pot that holds water. And I cannot stress this enough. At least once a week, you are going to want to flush out your LECA to ensure that you're removing any salt buildup in that malt or in those those little capsules in those areas. If the salt creeps up on you or you're not regularly maintaining your LECA, one day you're just going to notice a very steep decline in your plant and it's probably because the LECA has become salt logged. So if you don't have this in a hydroponic system where you have flow and water flow and movement and you have this in a stagnant container, it is incredibly important. 
One way you can avoid this is with distilled water. Distilled water doesn't have the chlorides, the fluoramines, and all that other, you know, sodium laden stuff. So that is a way to get around it is using distilled water. And you're probably thinking, well, distilled water is very neutral and the, the, the charge of distilled water would indicate that you're actually gonna remove nutrient from the plant. I could do a whole friggin' video just on tap water versus distilled water onto itself. And you're not horribly wrong there, but distilled water is going to preserve your LECA and keep it happier for longer. So if you're doing a semi-hydroponic system where you have a cup and then you're putting another cup inside of that cup and you're filling it up with water, you do want to rinse that LECA at least once a week. The second issue is that it is very low in nutrient because it has been processed under very, very high heat. Um, all the organic material in that product is completely gone. It's been burned up, it's disappeared. So there is no natural cycle of any sort happening in your semi-hydroponic system. If you use LECA, you do not have a nitrogen cycle. If you have LECA, you don't have your phosphorus cycle. There's just, you, you're not going to have the same amount of microbial activity. You can argue me to the death on that. You just won't, you simply can't. Um, because there's no organic material in that product whatsoever. The only thing organic in there is literally the roots of your plant. So you will notice nutrient deficiencies very quickly, or you will notice a very slow growth of your plant and your plant will never get that large if you don't add stuff to it. So we'll go through more so the adding or um, um, things you can add to it to help them grow. If you have them in a fully hydroponic system, like the ones I have behind me, that ooh, that's LECA and that is LECA, both of these are LECA, um, that is different because I have fish in there, the fish are tootin', and so that tootin' goes into my LECA and actually gives it some nutrients. I also don't have the salt buildup because I have the constant water flow in there, and it's fish tank water, so you know, I'm, I am dechlorinating. Anyways, I'm uh, taking, or I'm taking all that sort of stuff out too. So that is slightly different scenario when it comes to nutrient with the fish tank scenario. If you have it in a semi-hydroponic system where you don't have fishes tootin' in the water, what you can do is you can get hydroponic fertilizer, which is low in sodium, um, and you can add that to your mixture but you are again going to want to make sure you're still rinsing that container on a regular basis. Um, another option you could go with is actually using just fish tank water in general, and that is what I use. So anything that I have in LECA in my home, I actually water and fill up the basins with the water from this fish tank. Because anyone who has fish knows you have to do regular water changes, and so my water changes just basically equal me taking the water out of here and putting it into, repurposing it into my plant's life, and then just putting fresh water in here. So that's what I do in that case, but you can get hydroponic fertilizer. Your hydroponic fertilizer you buy will not be organic. I'm sorry, that's just a fact. Uh, the reason being is because if you have organic fertilizer, you need some sort of microbe population in order to break down those products into something that's bioavailable. We've talked about bioavailability bio before on this channel and it's the same thing with the LECA. Now, you could technically put a miracle Grow or something inorganic that's not hydroponically, made for hydroponics into there, but I heavily suggest you dilute that very, very well. Um, and again, you really, really then have to make sure that you're rinsing out that LECA. And the reason for that is because if you watched my organic versus inorganic fertilizer video, we went over exactly how inorganic fertilizer is made. And sodium is just a byproduct or a needed additive in order to just design fertilizer in general and get it into a stable form that we can then use in our gardens or on our houseplants. The third thing I've noticed with LECA, I started using LECA, I want to say probably like five, probably, no, probably longer than seven years ago. You look back on my old videos. I probably have videos with stuff in Laka in the background. I don't think I ever talked about it before, but I 
been doing it for a while. And one thing that I have noticed is it's very rare that you're going to grow a big plant in LECA unless if it's hydroponically grown. So that obviously California and alocasia is a very big plant. Um, he's huge and he is a pond plant, but you can see he's in that white container at the bottom. That is all LECA, but that's hydroponically grown. So I've got, you know, the fish fertilizer, the toots, and then I have the flow, the water flow, which is, you know, helping nourish very good roots. Semi-hydroponically, I'm, I've never had a big plant semi-hydroponically. I'm just being totally honest with you. The reason for that, I think, in my personal opinion, is a combination of not so much the nutrient side of it, it's more so the support mechanism. So because I don't have aeration in my roots, um, and I don't have the weight of the LECA, the LECA is not very heavy. That's why it's called lightweight expandable clay aggregate. But because there's no weight on the roots to kind of push them down, they don't dig in and they don't root in. Um, in this system, I obviously have the pressure of the water from the top. I actually have um, river rock on top of that and I've got airflow, all that stuff. So there's a lot of things that are working in the favor of that elephant ear, whereas semi-hydroponically, I find that the plants eventually get to a point where they're too big for LECA and it's too much pull and too much tugging on the roots. So I'm always getting set back because of that. That's just my experience. I would say generally, once a plant starts getting a little bit larger, it will eventually be time to move it over to, you know, wood chips or bark or soil or whatever the case is. But that's the only thing that I've noticed is that LECA isn't heavy enough. It doesn't have that weight and it doesn't have that support that soil does. And so I find that large plants don't do as well or they don't get as large in the LECA itself. My experience with transferring plants from semi-hydroponic to soil for cuttings or plants that are, you know, moderately small is actually very good. My experience with that is, and I think the reason why cuttings do so well in LECA is because of that abrasiveness. I talked about this in my imports video a little bit, but the LECA is like a pumice. It's like a pumice stone. And so it actually builds up a cuticle on the root that's very thick and, um, you know, hardy it's thickened up it's calloused and so when you transfer it to soil there's no shock to the root there's no tender skin there's very little risk of infection and plants just transition very well into any sort of other growing medium um in my experience a lot better than what happens with a water propagation so if you've had really bad luck with water propagations, I suggest trying out a LECA propagation. I think you'd be pretty blown away with the results there. And again, I think it's just because that cuticle is building up. Now, if you have a plant that is notorious for mealybugs, some sort of uh, soil borne bug issue, or if you have issues with overwatering or root rot, and you're just thinking, I wanna to go to LECA. I do not want dirt in my home anymore. I want to go to LECA. I will tell you that a majority of plants don't respond hugely well to it. You'd be better off starting a cutting in LECA and then just nursing and caring for that cutting into a larger plant rather than changing a full-blown plant into LECA. And I don't, I mean, there's a little bit of logic behind why it doesn't work, but plants generally do not respond well. They, the roots will die off in my experience when you do that transfer. And I think that's hugely because of the fact that those plants are very used to being snug and compact into an area. And when we rip them out of the soil or we even just water or brush them off, our root hairs are very fragile. And when we put them into LECA, we're losing all those root hairs. I can guarantee you, you're losing all your root hairs. They're very tiny. In some cases, they're microscopic tiny, but you are disrupting those. And the root hair is the main source of nutrients for that plant. So the bigger the plant, the worse the transplant and the worse the shock is gonna be when it comes to going into LECA. You're gonna lose a lot of 
roots themselves because again you literally ripped off the the main vein or the main source for that plant to get any sort of nutrients or water and the other thing i've noticed is leaf loss and that again just has to do with the root damage it's not so much the leaves being um, impeded or harmed by the leca it's the roots that you've actually done the damage to so that's my experience the other thing is sounds crazy but plants are very smart and they're atomically they are able to adjust and pivot depending on the environment that they're in that is how they've survived as long as they have survived and so they're very good at analyzing their environment and then changing their almost their DNA like their way of reacting to it so when you transfer it from soil into LECA I think what happens with the roots especially is that they were designed for that gas exchange they were designed for that um, amount of water that amount of air that amount of nutrients that was in the soil profile and because the soil is a very happy <laughs> place to be and that's what plants are designed to be in when we transfer it from soil to LACA we end up with a lot more airflow and I think that added air or that extra air dries the cuticle of the root out too fast and because the root wasn't designed to be dried out that quickly we end up with the inability to pivot and we end up with a lot of root death because we're just literally drying the entire body of the root out. And I'm pretty sure that's why it reacts that way. That's why when you go from LECA to soil, there's less issues because you're not, you're going from a pretty harsh environment when we're talking root wise into an oasis, which would be your potting soil of whatever sort that is, sphagnum, whatever the case, that has a lot more moisture in it. So the only shock that would be from LECA to soil would actually be the air exchange. But if you just potted it into a very fresh batch of potting soil that's light and fluffy and airy, that is very, it's nothing compared to compact heavy, which has been potted up for a while. So just water and natural gravity forces have compacted it around that root. You went from a nice little snug, moist, dark environment, and now you've just moved it into a very light, airy area. So that's just my opinion on why it doesn't work so well. You can do it, don't get me wrong. With all this stuff, you can do it, but I just, it's gonna react. That's all I'm gonna say, it's gonna react. Do not be alarmed if you lose a majority or some of your plant. Some plants do better than others, for sure. Alocasias do great with the transition. Um, orchids absolutely spaz out, by the way, because I've done it, they do, they hate it. Things do best, pothos, philodendron, uh, monstera cuttings do best, but if I was to transfer like this guy behind me, if I was to transfer him to Leca, he'd die. I know he'd die off, so that's just my opinion. If you are elderly or you have like a disability or you're unable to lift heavy things, say you're pregnant, LECA is really great to put in the bottom of big containers because it absorbs water and it's lighter than rocks. So it's just the perfect mix to be able to put in the bottom of your pot and then put soil on top. In my experience, it's great for that. It is also very good if you are an overwaterer that doesn't want to risk the idea of transferring completely to LECA, but like the idea of LECA in the sense that you can overwater, <laughs> you can do a hybrid between the two. So you can mix LECA into your potting soil. Do it within reason, obviously. So don't put like 75% LECA in a little bit of potting soil. That's not gonna end well, I can promise you that. But you could probably push 50% in a lot of cases. Um, what you do want is you want to be able to see more soil than you do LACA. To put that into perspective for you. I know a lot of people that do utilize this and do use this and it does work wonderful and I completely advocate towards it. I've done this for a lot of friends and family actually. I've done a LACA soil hybrid for them um, because they've overwatered and I know that this is the solution for them. So that is just a fun fact. Interestingly enough, you can do cacti, succulent, that sort of thing in LECA. You just have to keep it a little bit on the drier side. So you are notorious for killing uh, succulents and cacti from overwatering. Maybe test out the idea of doing a semi-hydroponic cacti succulent mix up. 
I could do a video for you on this actually. I did this, actually the girl who made this shirt for me, my best friend Cheryl, um, check her out. It's DIYXE. She has an Instagram and a website and everything that you can get this stuff on. And anyway, it's super cute. Um, you, I actually made one of her cacti. I think it's a euphorbia. I wanna say it's a euphorbia, I can't remember now, but I put that into a semi-hydroponic system because she kept over watering her cacti and she just keeps on rotting them right out. And so far, it's been working very well for her and she's very happy with it. It's very easy for her to manage. So I hope this helps you out with LECA. If you have any more questions about LECA, please let them let me know in the comments down below. If there's enough of them, I'll do a whole other video on it. If there's just a couple of them, I will answer them and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.